discuss about the, the global challenges, how, how to feed a growing population in the world, how to make it in a healthy manner, how to make it in a sustainable manner is a huge challenge and Congress like, like today are part, part of the way of, of this innovative approach to, to, to look at it and we have to do it when we are already observing the, the impact of the climate change. Έχουμε την τιμή και τη χαρά να φιλοξενούμε τον Χαίμε Λίγιο Λόπε, ο οποίο είναι εκτελεστικό διευθυντή στο Διεθνέ Συμβούλιο Ελαιολάδου. Έχει αναλάβει του τελευταίου μήνε τα καθήκοντά του και βρίσκεται εδώ στην Καλαμάτα με αφορμή το 10ο συνέδριο τη ΓΕΑ Επιχειρήν, όπου τοποθετήθηκε και αναφέρθηκε σε κρίσιμα ζητήματα σχετικά με το ελαιόλαδο. Εμεί θα θέλαμε να τον ρωτήσουμε φυσικά για την κατάσταση σχετικά με το ελαιόλαδο στον κόσμο και όχι μόνο στην Ευρώπη ή την Ελλάδα και να μας πει τη γνώμη του για αυτό που ο ίδιος πιστεύει ότι θα ακολουθήσει ή θα ήθελε να γίνει. Mr. Lopez, it's a very nice uh, the opportunity today here with the conference of Yea Epichiri. We have you here in Kalamata. Is your first uh, time here in Greece, in Kalamata? It's my first time as executive director of the International Olive Council, but I've been in, in Greece before, mm -hmm. but it's first time ever in Kalamata. It's nice to meet you and uh, of course we want to ask you about the situation now in the world maybe about yes. the olive oil. Yes, well we are in a difficult situation because first time ever since we have a statistic we have two uh, short harvests in, in a row. So mm, normally uh, production in the world of olive oil is over 3 million tons and now we are below three, those 3 million tons for two years in a row. So this short of production uh, uh, came at the moment where consumption was growing. Consumption was growing particularly in international markets like United States, Canada, Brazil, China, Japan. And the, 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 those two things has bring prices uh, higher than ever. So we never saw uh, olive oil as, as high price as we are seeing now. Main reasons behind this short of production are related to climatic events, uh, to the climate change, ba basically high temperatures and lack of, of rain. Do you believe that these prices will stay in this uh, uh, level uh, because of the climate change or the things will be changed uh, next year maybe? Well, we, we, what we believe is, uh, we see what we are, we, we will see ups and downs, mm -hmm. ups and downs. It's hard to, um, uh, we, we hope to recover the, the tendency of growing production, but if you're asking about the next uh, harvest, it's a little bit too early to say, because now the olive trees are flowering and it's a critical moment. So we need to wait and see. There has been some rain, the cultivation is going overall in the main producing areas well, but we need to see the temperatures during the flowering period because this is critical, this is what happened in the past. Uh, we, if we have a, a heat uh, wave, what we call extraordinary high temperatures could be, could be problematic. So for the moment we need to wait and see for mm -hmm. the next harvest. But the tendency it will be that we will recover uh, big productions and low productions and we will see this, this fluctuation in, in the future very likely. Do you believe that these prices uh, made something um bad for the choices of the consumers maybe of maybe they change their choices of course big high prices are not good for consumers and, and particularly when a product that we want particularly mediterranean countries that is accessible for everybody but on the other hand we are observing that people remain pretty loyal to to the olive oil and are ready to pay for it and when you look at the value what you get with an extraordinary product, particular with extra virgin olive oil and the health benefits and also the sustainability of the production, we, 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 people start to understand that it's not that high prices, it's a good value and if you put in context with, with, the, with the money you spend over the, in, in other foods and other things, uh, we, we, don't, we are not afraid of people changing, let's say, their, their, their habits of, of consumption. Um, as um, international uh, consul of olive oil, I want to ask uh, about your next uh, targets, maybe. Yes, we are in my in our priority of the agenda. We have clearly climate change. We need to address climate change is the main concern in the olive oil 
world and we are working in, in two main areas. On, on one hand, we need to work in the adaptation of the cultivation. We need to adapt and we, we know the olive tree is a plant very resistant and with a lot of capacity to adaptation and we, are, we need to look at the different varieties, traditional crops, different systems to see how can we adapt and diversify the risk with the time of flowering and, and, and resistance to heat and also to scarcity of water. And also water is a key issue, uh, the, uh, so, so um, going to efficient and smart uh, irrigation systems, it is part of the, of the solution among other practices uh, when we look at the cultivation. But the other thing we are also working on is very important uh, related to climate change, is the opportunity to explain to the consumers, to the society, the contribution of the olive sector to, as part of the solution uh, for the climate change. Many people is not aware that behind the olive oil or, or the olive or the table olive, there is an authentic uh, forest of olive trees. And this forest is breathing, is, is, ca is capturing CO2 from the atmosphere and is fixing it in, in, in permanent manner. This has, been, this has to be recognized and this has to be quantified, it has to be explained to the society as far as we made the, 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 with the olive oil and health, we need to make the, the connection between olive oil and climate change and we are, this is also part of our priority work for the next years. Climate change is in our life so we have to live with this and we have to take uh, anything we have to make our lives better but uh, which is what is which is the position of Greece uh, in the discussion about the olive oil in the world? Well Greece is one of our let's say more active um, and relevant members in the international community uh, because the work we do in the, in the International Olive Council is mainly based on scientific uh, advance and scientific research and scientific discussion and Greece has uh, very relevant research institutions both in inland, in, in Kalamata, in, in Peloponnese but also in Crete mm -hmm. and they are always uh, very active and, and uh, in our discussions of how to find solutions and this is let's say in the in the at the edge of our discussions where we need to find solutions we always come with Greek experts to, to collaborate on the other let's say the more political arena Greek, Greek is always uh, aligned with other um, producer countries of the European Union as in the International Life Council the European Union has come with, uh, with one voice in the international community so they are always well aligned with other countries like Italy or Spain because at the end in the International Life Council we are all together to find solutions for the whole sector and for the whole industry without getting into the different origins of the oil. So we have future with the extra virgin olive oil Abs absolutely, and we'll be here to talk about it again.